Hello, I am going to be sharing. Oh, I just it looked like we were having some turbulence there because I kicked the desk. I'm going to be showing you today in this video. I'm going to show you how to uh, calculate monthly pay for a flight attendant position um, so that you can better compare different airlines. So the reason that I'm doing this video today is um, we're having a free study hall tomorrow. If you're not registered, please register. Um, even if you can't make it live, as long as you're registered, you'll get the replay. Uh, study hall is a coaching. Uh, it's a it's a co it's a group coaching training opportunity. It's really, really fun. I'll talk a little bit about it in a, it, towards the end. But what I want to uh, kind of jump into is because I'm doing study hall tomorrow, I did a poll in the Facebook group and asked a bunch of different things uh, that were sort of like urgent things that were weighing on people's hearts and minds, uh, questions for me to address, address tomorrow. And that was super helpful and very um, eye-opening. I'm excited to address as many of those things as possible tomorrow during study hall. Uh, but one thing that that uh, got more votes than I kind of expected uh, was about how to do, was to talk about commuting, uh, finding pay, calculating pay, things like that. So I'm not gonna talk about commuting today. We'll talk about commuting tomorrow in study hall. But I thought I could do a quick video to uh, explain how to calculate uh, pay for the flight attendant position um, because it's a Friday night and who doesn't want to do math on a Friday night? Yes. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to tell you how you can find how much every airline pays or each airline pays or most airlines pay. This is a, this is a pretty good tactic. Um, well, one thing is it's in the hub. So if you become a member of the hub or you are a member of the hub, then you have access to a database or a library you could say, a library, a resource um, that will uh, give you the starting pay for most airlines. It's not quite finished yet. We're working on it. But that's a good place to go and research first. But otherwise, as well as, um, you can use the internet to find starting pay. So there's a couple ways to do it. When you apply with a job, when you apply with an airline, they probably have the starting pay rate, hourly rate in the job description. So you can make a note of that. Um, I, I just am kind of in the habit of, and I think this would be a good habit for you. If you apply to a job, copy and paste the job description into an email and email it to yourself or take a screenshot and email it to yourself with a subject line you know, Allegiant Airlines or United Airlines so that it's easy to find because I'm not a great uh, organizer when it comes to finding things. So I need lots of tricks like that. So if you email it to yourself or email the screenshot with a with a subject line or the word in there so that you can search through your emails and find uh, what you're looking for, that's one way to access the information. So if the airline is currently hiring, you could go to their website and see how much the hourly pay is. What's not always on there, though, is the monthly guarantee. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So um, we'll talk about what monthly guarantee is in just a minute, because the other place you can get this information on the internet, uh, besides the hub and the job description, would be in the airline's contract which um, most airlines are unionized. SkyWest is not, but they have a sort of company union type. They have a group of people who sort of act as a union to, so they have a contract. Um, and then Delta is not unionized either, but most other airlines are, their flight attendants are part of a union, which means they have a contract between the flight attendant group and um, the company. What that really means is they've just basically agreed on the rules. The rules of the game are this, we both agree, let's play. Yes, and nobody can change the rules without um, the other side agreeing, basically is what a contract is. So what the contract is actually technically called is, an, is a, you need to know this, so I'm going to say it clear so you can Google it. It's a collective bargaining agreement, CBA. It's a collective bargaining agreement. So if you go and you Google it up, United Airlines Flight Attendant Collective Bargaining Agreement, then somewhere in the, in the results will be a link to their contract. 
um, airlines that have been around a while, like United <laughs> or some of the other ones, there may be a couple different contracts. You want to make sure you're you're looking at the most recent one. The most recent one, though, may have already expired, um, which means uh, the contracts will they will decide contracts like we decide on the rules for five years. And then we're going to get together. We're going to talk again, see if anything changed, hopefully get a pay raise. Um, you know, hello, inflation. Let's get it. Let's get a pay raise. And then the contract, uh, you'll have a new contract. When your contract expires, though, um, you continue, everyone continues to play by those rules until the new rules are agreed upon. So it doesn't actually expire and like dissolve. It just expires and it means it's time for us to look, re -look, re look this over, come back to the table, negotiate again. So the contract may not be through 21, 2021, but just make sure you're not looking at like 1988 or something like that. Okay. So that's how you're going to find the information. Once you're in the contract, once you found the contract, the legal document that is just such lovely reading, um, where you're going to find the information is compensation. Compensation is how much you get paid. You may see a chart. More than likely, you will. The first column in that chart will say DOS. That stands for date of signing. Okay. So the day that the contract is signed is the day that the flight attendants start making that amount of money. So it doesn't have a date on it, like, you know, November 19th or whatever. Oh, that's my mom's birthday. That totally like slipped out. Okay. Anyways. So if it's November 19th or whatever, um, if that's the date, uh, that they don't put the date on there because maybe it gets signed on the 17th or maybe it's signed on the 22nd. So they just do date of signing. DOS is what it will say, DOS. Then the next column will say DOS plus one or DOS plus one year. And that's date of signing plus one year. So a contract gets signed in 2019. The day it's signed, you get that raise. One year later, say it's, let's just go with November 19th. Signed on November 19th. One year later, on November 19th, the entire pay scale pops up to the next column, and that's the starting pay, second year pay, third year pay, fourth year pay. So really, you're getting a raise like twice a year. You're getting a raise on your date of hire because you'll go from working from a one-year flight attendant to your second year of flying. Some will give a raise at six months too, but in general, you'll get a raise every year until you get to the very top of the chart, and you'll get a raise on that date of signing plus one. So uh, if you get hired in October, then on October, you'll have your anniversary and you'll get your anniversary raise. And then in November, everyone gets a contract raise. OK, so you'll want to count. You'll have to look at the front or maybe the first couple pages. Um, sometimes it's after the table of contents. The information is in near the front of the contract where they signed it, the date they signed it. So you'll have to look at the year <laughs> that they signed it, 2016. Then you'll have to count 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, 2021, that's five years. So date of signing plus five. Or if there's only like date of signing plus three is the last line, then that's where we are. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. And you're going to look at the first year or starting pay date of signing, date of signing plus one. OK, so that's how you get that's how you get how much they are currently paying pay rate. OK, first step, second step, third. I don't know what step we're on because we've done Googled. We found a contract. We've done Reddit. OK, so I don't know what step we're on. But the next step is now the next piece of information that you need is for a reserve flight attendant, because you will be starting on reserve, you need to know how much um, the minimum, the minimum guarantee, minimum monthly guarantee that a flight attendant on reserve can be paid, the hourly guarantee. Here's what that means. When you are on reserve, when you start, you will be awarded a line or a schedule. We use the word line instead of schedule. You'll be awarded a schedule that has all reserve days on it, days off and reserve days. Reserve days are days you're on call. The days that you're on call or on reserve, you may get a trip. Yay, hopefully. Hello, Paris, First Class International. Or you may just sit at home. If you sit at home, then you're not working. You're not collecting flight hours. If you... Um, just sit for the whole month because they're overstaffed and they don't need you, then you haven't collected any flight hours, but you still get paid because you were still available all of those days. So the amount you get paid is decided by 
the minimum monthly guarantee for reserve flight attendants. Sometimes you, that's is, sometimes you'll hear people say, I broke guarantee or I hope to break guarantee. That means they hope or they think that they will get over their minimum number of flight hours. If you go over, you get paid whatever you do over too. So if your guarantee is 75 hours, you fly 77, you get paid 77. If your guarantee is 77, 75 hours, you fly 30 hours, you get paid 75. If you pay zero, fly zero hours, 75. You fly 75, get 75, fly 70, get 70, fly 70, get, sorry, fly 70, get 75. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to do any more numbers right now because we got a lot of numbers coming. Okay. So minimum guarantee. So those are the two numbers that you need. You need to know how much the airline pays the flight attendant starting out and what is the monthly guarantee. Yeah. Flight hour guarantee. Um, another number that I think is interesting and helpful to know is minimum number of days off. Okay. So some airlines guarantee you 10 days off a month with a 72 hour guarantee. Some guarantee, some guarantee you 12 days off with a 75 hour guarantee. So in this situation, if you have 10 days off and you're only guaranteed 72 hours, or you could have 12 days off and be guaranteed 75 hours, you get paid two more hours that have two more days off. So really you're like per day goes up even more and that could almost be better even if the actual hourly rate was less because you're getting paid more per day or more per, right? Does that make sense? Or more per month um, overall because you're per working day. Yeah. And um, a lot of times you can pick up on your days off depending on your airline's contract, but a lot of times you can pick up on your days off. So if you work for an airline like Southwest that has a significant number of days off, you only are on reserve three days a month, three days a week, which ends up to like 12 to 15 days a month. You have a lot of days off. That means you could pick up trips and those, anything you pick up on your days off is paid above your guarantee. So Let's say this is getting way more in depth than I thought, but if you're here, you know, you can listen. <laughs> um, that means if you sit reserve and you are assigned 30 hours worth of flight, but your guarantee is 75, you're assigned 30 hours worth of flight. And then on your days off, you pick up a trip that's worth 10 hours. You would get paid 75 hours, which is your guarantee plus your 10 hour trip. So you get paid 85 hours, even though you technically, how many hours did you fly? Can you do the math? How many hours did you actually work? 40 <laughs> and you get paid 85. That's traditionally how it's done. Every airline has a little bit of nuance as to who can pick up, when they can pick up, when they can get paid, when they can break guarantee, override pay, things like that. But in general, if you're just trying to kind of wrap your head around how pay works in general, this is a good generalization um, as to how flight attendant pay works. Now let's talk about, now that we have our two numbers, <laughs> let's talk about how to calculate what the base monthly pay is for a new hire flight attendant. You're going to take your uh, hourly rate, which you, yes, you get paid when the door shuts until the door opens. Okay. That's an hourly, that's how much you get paid per flight hour. It's not at takeoff. They, the flight begins when the plane, when the door shuts or when the plane pushes back, kind of depending on the aircraft type, but they're basically at the same time. So the um, hourly rate, your flight hour starts then. When you're on a trip, the whole time from the time you check in, 24 hours a day until you check out, usually four days later, you will also be earning per diem, which you can find that rate in the contract too. It's anywhere from $1.75 to $2.75, depending on the airline. So you can do basic math if you want to get super, if you want to get like a super duper spreadsheet or something and be like, okay, if I do this many trips and per diems about this, um, that's, that's another thing you could add to it, but we're just going to do basic pay right now. Okay. So that you can, so that you can compare apples to apples, um, how much per how much. Okay. And the difference. Um, so I pulled, I pulled two different airlines data so that we could do the numbers together and we can see how it works. So United Airlines, United Airlines currently pays $28.88 per hour to new hires, $28.88. We're going to, I got the calculator. We're going to do it times their monthly guarantee, 78 hours. When I was at Continental, it was like 83. 
78 hours. So $28.88 times 78 hours equals $2,252. $2,252.64. That is the base monthly pay for United Airlines flight attendant. Before per diem, before override, you get different things. If you're, you get different things. You get more money. If you're in the galley, you get more money for this or that. Um, but that's the very base pay. And we're not looking at this number. This is not the number you use to go, holy shiitake, can this make my budget work? That's not the number. That's not what this number is used for. Okay. Because this number is a very, like, 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 um, it's not, a good picture of what your check will look like. It's just a way, the reason you want this number is so you can easily compare who pays more and how much more do they pay. That's all. We're just being able to compare apples to apples to compare all the different airlines. This is not the number that you would set your budget around. You would not be trying to budget at $2,000, at $2,200 a month. Um, you know, so which, cause I don't even know what that is. What would that be a year? Let's see. I still got it up times 12 equals comes out to like 27,000. Okay. So, you know, it's not fantastic money, but I mean, you know, and then a per diem on top per diem, you could estimate if you wanted to like ballpark it just to wrap your brain around it, 10,000 a year. That's a pretty good broad generalization um, of how I think I have a comment. That's why I'm getting distracted. Oh, it's just someone says Abby. Hi. Um, that's a good ballpark. So you could say, I usually say that in a main line, you can expect to work, make anywhere from twenty-three to thirty-five thousand dollars in your first year. So this is twenty-seven with a base pay, probably closer to thirty-seven with your per diem and your um, international per diem and your international override and things like that that you would get from United even on reserve. Okay, so that's the first one that we're gonna do. Now. The next one that I pulled just for comparison reasons and because I could find it pretty easily is Allegiant. So Allegiant pays $23.15 um, to their flight attendants to start. And then they have a 75 hour guarantee. So it equals out to $1,736.25. So we've got $2,200 versus about $1,700. Um, that's kind of what we're comparing. So we're looking at, what is that, a $500 a month spread between the two. So maybe $6,000 a year. And then again, depending on um, what you can pick up and per diem and things like that. Allegiant probably don't get a big per diem check because they mostly do out and backs. But again, that's not the point of this conversation. We're just trying to compare things. <laughs> we're just kind of trying to compare. Um, also, they both have a guarantee of 12 days off. So the days off are pretty comparable, but that's how you do the math. So um, you find the contract, find the starting pay rate, the hourly rate and the monthly guarantee, and then you multiply them together. And then that is your yearly, that is your monthly rate. Um, a lot of airlines do, some airlines, I don't want to say a lot. Some do a six month raise. So if you wanted to, you could take the first six months and do and uh, multiply that out. And then the next six months and then add them together and get your year. Um, if you wanted to kind of do it that way, if the yearly rate is a better number for you to be comparing or kind of looking at. Um, so that's how, that's how you do it. That's how you compare uh, apples to apples. Now, one more thing. You will see something called trip for pay, TFP, trip for pay. Southwest and um, Alaska Airlines pay per nautical mile, not per minute. So these hourly rates are actually paid per minute, right? So if you worked half of an hour, 30 minutes, you would get half of an hourly rate. So whatever that is, $14. But Southwest and Alaska pay per nautical mile. So when you find their number, um, it will actually be one trip for pay. So I think it's something like $25 trip for pay, uh, Southwest, one trip for pay. That's 50 nautical miles. I believe it's 50. You can correct me in the comments if you don't, if I'm wrong, because I'm doing it off the top of my head. 
Um, so there is an equation. I'll have the equation tomorrow in study hall. I didn't think to grab it today. I'll grab the equation so I can share it tomorrow in study hall so that you have it. But what you first have to do for these two airlines, there's an extra step. So you have to get the trip for pay number and you have to get the monthly guarantee number. And then you have to take the trip for pay number and multiply it times this um, equation. It's like you multiply it by like 1.21 or something. If you happen to know the Southwest or the uh, Alaska trip for pay uh, equation multiplication number, if you would drop it in the comments, I would love that. That would be super nice for someone watching the replay. Um, but you basically multiply that number by the trip for pay number. It's like 1.12 and it brings it up. It makes the number bigger. So that's why when you look at Southwest, they make like $25 or something. You're like, how are they the highest paid or how are they at the top? They're like, you know, that's not the highest. That's not even near the highest. But then when you multiply it up, it goes up into like the $28 an hour. And then once you convert it kind of over to hourly rate by multiplying it, then you can multiply it by the month by the minimum guarantee. I believe that all of that is true. If that's not how you do it, I think that's how you do it. That's how I've been doing it. So that's how it works for Alaska and um, and Southwest. And then that allows you again to compare apples to apples because you have the right uh, the right data. Um, all right. So study halls tomorrow. It's at eleven o'clock central, which is my time zone. It's at twelve noon Eastern, um, and then that would make it at nine a.m. Pacific. Um, you can Google if I didn't say you're and you can't figure out the time zone changes. Uh, you can use the Googles. I love the Googles to find the answers to these things. Uh, if you need the time zone, you do need to register. The registration link is in the description of this video. I would love to see you there. Um, I'm really really excited. We're going to be talking more about commuting, more about pay. And also the big winner of the poll was a face to face interview, uh, tips, tricks, techniques, guidance, training. And then a close second was how to feel confident and not freeze up completely when I start to answer my interview questions. <laughs> so we'll be talking about that too. Also during study hall, we always, um, we do a uh, talk time where I'll be teaching. Uh, we do uh, open it for Q and A, open the floor for the Q and A, which is really fun and kind of unusual. We don't usually get, there's not any uh, many other places where you can do just open Q and A with me in real time besides study hall. Um, and then uh, I we will also be practicing our interview skills because interviewing is a skill. The more you practice it, the better you get. If you think you're awesome at interviewing, good. Come and practice and get better. If you think that you are horrible at interviewing, that's okay because you can practice and you can get better. And so come tomorrow and practice and get better. Um, all right. I can't wait to see um, y'all tomorrow. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can pop them in the comments. We can do our best to maybe answer each other's questions too, because I'm sure people are going to be like, how much does this person pay or this airline pay or this or that, that, that or I can't find that. Um, so I would love it if we would be helpful in the comments. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got for you today. Hope this is helpful. Enjoy your Friday night math session. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.